everyone. My name is Amy Bell El Mohammed, and I'm a quality manager with Alltech. Today, I'm going to show you how you can grow bacteria at home, a little bit about microbiology, and why companies and businesses grow bacteria on purpose. Now, you may be thinking, what is bacteria? Because you've probably never actually seen it before. And the reason why you've never seen it before is because it's so small that you cannot see it without a microscope, unless, of course, there is a lot of it. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to grow bacteria so that you can actually see it. Now, bacteria is also a single cell and living microorganism that can live in a variety of different environments. And I know sometimes it's hard to think about really small organisms that you can't see. So I like to compare bacteria to birds because it's more easy to conceptualize. So for example, penguins live in a cold environment. They eat krill and they eat fish. And then they are very, very good at swimming. But there are other birds, like the toucan, that don't live in a cold environment. They actually prefer a hot environment. And they eat fruit and insects. And they are better at flying than they are at swimming. So bacteria are very similar, that they all have different needs for their environment and where they live. They have different preferences on their food, so different things that they like to eat. And then they also all have different things that they're good at. As a result, there are good bacteria and bad bacteria. The best example of good bacteria are the bacteria that live in our gut, in our digestive system. And those bacteria are called probiotics. Now something that you might already be a little bit familiar with are the bad bacteria. And we call them bad bacteria because they are pathogenic, which means that they can make us sick. So, so today I'm going to show you how to grow bacteria, but you might be wondering why would you want to grow bacteria, especially if some bacteria are bad. And in different careers and work environments, we grow bacteria for a variety of different reasons. So sometimes we grow them on purpose because we want to make the good bacteria. We want, we want to make the probiotics and add those probiotics to food, such as yogurt, so that we can increase our digestion and make sure that we are absorbing the food that we eat properly. We also do it for food safety. So we will test different food and products after completing the manufacturing to make sure that they do not have any bad bacteria so that when you eat the food, you don't get sick. And that's what I do in quality, is test the products to make sure that the products will not make anyone sick and they do not have any contaminants, such as bacteria. So quality control people will test products to make sure that if we're making the bacteria on purpose, that we made enough of the good bacteria, and if we're making food that is not supposed to have bacteria, that the food is safe. The other reason why we'd want to grow bacteria is for diagnostic testing. So if someone is sick and we don't understand why they're sick or what's making them sick, we may want to try to grow their, uh, a sample of their blood or their skin or an infection to see if there's a specific bacteria that is causing the problem. Once you know what bacteria is causing the problem, you can use the proper antibiotic and make the person feel better. So, the different things that I have chosen to swab are a reusable straw because sometimes we don't clean these very well and so I thought it would be a fun idea to see how well um, my family's been cleaning the reusable straws. I also have a sample of soil or dirt from the garden. I have a sample of water from a nearby lake. I have a sample of a dog treat that I feed my dog regularly, so hopefully this is clean and healthy for my dog. I have also gotten a, uh, a little cup of yogurt because yogurt has good bacteria growing inside of it on purpose, again, so that we can increase our digestion and our absorption of our food. And then the last thing that I'm going to test and swab is my friend's shoe. Uh, so the, 
the bottom of the shoe, I'm guessing, probably is pretty gross. Um, so we'll see what kind of bacteria my friend has on the bottom of her shoe. Um, first, before we start, I want to show you how to swab and how to accurately put the bacteria onto the culture media in the petri dish. So when you swab something, so you're going to take, let's pretend this is a swab. So you're going to take it and you're first going to put the swab into your sterile saline solution in order to get it wet so that it's easier for it to pick up the bacteria. So you're going to put it in there and then you're going to swab the surface of whatever you want to test for bacteria. And then after you swab the surface, you're going to put the bacteria or uh, sample onto the culture plate. So let's pretend that this is a culture plate and the proper method for swabbing a culture plate is to go into three or four sections. So the first section, you're going to want to do very heavily. And then you're going to move to the next section and do it a little less. And then the third section, a little less. And then the fourth section, you're just going to take it and go like this. And so that helps for you to create individual colonies or small groups of bacteria on the plate. And this helps, especially when diagnosing um, different diseases so that you can identify each individual bacteria that grows. So for the first one, I will do the shoe. Open up your swab and your sterile saline. And in a lab environment, you wouldn't want to talk while you're doing this because you could accidentally contaminate your plates while you're talking because you have bacteria in your mouth. But for this, we're going to talk a little bit. Talk it through. So I'm taking the swab and I'm putting it into the sterile saline just to get the swab wet. And now the swab is wet. And we can take it and swab the bottom of the shoe. So I'm going to get what looks like some dirt. Now I'm going to use this streaking method and put the sample onto the petri dish. So we're going to be very heavy in the beginning, and then a little less, and then a little less, and that it's done. So right now you can't see anything there, and we don't know yet whether or not anything will grow. Um, but we're going to try, and we will see if the shoe has bacteria on it. So I will check on them at the same exact time tomorrow and see if there's any growth and I will document if there's any growth and then I will wait another day so a total of two days and check them again and see if there is growth and I will see you in two days when all of the plates have hopefully had an opportunity to grow bacteria and we will see what we have. 